I'm doing another update on my leopard gecko, which actually turned out to be a boy, so, yeah, he's actually a boy, and this is his new tank, it's a 20 gallon tank, and uh, I have a new warm hide, but the cold hide is actually the same as the last tank that we had, it's the same one we used, and we have um, this new water bowl, and the moist hide, and I'll, and I'll show y'all all of those a little closer, but yeah, this is his new tank so far. And uh, this is his lamp that he has. And it, it is on only one section of the top right here. But it still keeps the whole tank heated in the right way it needs. And keeps the temperature at what it needs to stay at. So I have a new calcium, new repti calcium thing, bottle canister thing or whatever. And it's a lot bigger than the last one. So yeah, this will last a long time and I dust crickets or mealworms or whatever I have in that. Um, same with the Reptivite. And I have Repti Safe for her water that goes right there. And the spray bottle, which this is the only one I can find, you know, only one we could find around town. So yeah, and uh, I put the Repti, Repti Safe uh, drops in that water too. And I did get this just recently too to help feed her and all that. Or actually feed him. And there he is right there coming out. He's ready to eat. And I am going to feed him very soon. There's his calcium bowl. And see the doors. It's doors like this. The two door thing. So here's the inside. It's actually really big. And this will uh, this will probably... This will keep him good for probably the rest of his life. It'll be it's definitely big enough, and it has a background that looks really nice with everything going on. And here's the moist hide, and I spray this every day. And I just have two napkins sitting down in there, and this is like a DIY kind of thing. I have a container and I cut a hole in it, make sure it's big enough for him to get in and get out. And so yeah, and I spray that every day, and I make sure there's just a, I can dump this over. And a few droplets, a few drops of water come out. That's how much, about how much water I put in there. I make sure that water can actually, just a little bit of water can actually spill out. And I clean her water dish every day. His, I'm going to probably keep calling him he, but, and that she, but I don't mean to call him he. So yeah, this is his new uh, warm hot. It's actually really tall. He can climb up it, do whatever he wants. But I'm going to get a piece of driftwood. I actually have one right now, and I, I'm i going to put it right here. It's going to be facing that way for more things for him to do and climb. So that would be very great. Good. Okay, I kind of messed up my words. What I was trying to say is I, I'm probably going to keep calling him a she, but it's a he. Just know that that's, that's uh, what I'm meaning. Because I'm still used, not used to calling him a he. So, yeah. It's actually, it's a really nice uh, tank. You know, it works really well. I like it. The doors, you know, they're really nice. And so I'm going to get into feeding now. Okay, I just got his millworms out of the refrigerator. They are giant millworms. So, yeah, he is older. He is older, so he needs some bigger millworms. So, yeah. Okay, real fast, more about the tank and him. This is loose substrate. It's eco-earth, but it is, it's safe from impaction. It, it is a loose substrate, and lots of loose substrates do cause impaction, but this one in particular does not. And he is 7.5 inches, which makes him about 9 months old. So right now I'm feeding him 6 to 7 crickets and mealworms with calcium and sometimes Reptivite, and I'll go over that in a second, but yeah. Okay, so yeah, two to three, or wait, six to seven, yeah, six to seven crickets and mealworms every time I feed them, and that is two to three times a week. I'm starting the two to three times a week schedule thing because he is soon to become an adult, so I'm going to go ahead and start in that. So yeah, he, um, two to three times a week, six to seven crickets and mealworms, and so for calcium and Reptivite, I'm doing calcium three times so when I feed them when I feed them today I'm going to use calcium next day calcium calcium and then after the three Reptivite 
So calcium, 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 reptivite. So yeah, that's my that's my schedule. And so let's get started in feeding. Okay, so I don't really have anywhere to prop my camera up, so just bear with me. Um, I'm gonna try to record. Wow, he's gonna eat. Okay, here are six norms. One, two, yeah. Six norms, and there's calcium, and I'll just dust them in that. Basically, this is what I do. I just kind of roll them around in it. Make sure they're covered. Make sure they're covered basically all around. See? So. Then I'll just grab them. The end. Yeah, and so that's basically it, and I'll just give you a little size comparison. These things are huge, and yeah, they are giant worms, so they're pretty big. So, yeah, they're a lot bigger than just normal worms. I do not use my norms. I mean, what? I do not use my hand to feed uh, him anymore because there he goes. He got it. I'll try to get it to a spot where you can see a lot better on the next time. But I do not use my hand anymore because he is really bad. His, just his accuracy when he goes to bite things is just awful, so he'll always bite my finger. And so, but these are a lot bigger, so he gets them a lot easier. But I still just use these. It's just easier. A lot easier to uh, use. So this is basically just the process, and then it's I mean, it's nothing much. I just kind of dust them in there. Um, so yeah. Let me give him a little boost. Sometimes he misses him. Some people choose to use bowls, like little bowls that they put them in, but I just, it doesn't really bother me. Or, I don't really use bowls. I don't, I just kind of throw them in there, but I make sure they don't get under the eco earth. So, yeah. I make sure it doesn't dig under there. So, yeah. I'll just finish up these two more, and then we'll keep going on. So yeah, he's finished eating, that's it, he's done, he's all full. That was six he just had. And just a few pointers. I keep the tank uh, at a degree between 80 and 90 degrees, like just a, right here, 80 to 90 degrees. And then the heat mat, which is underneath, it covers up about this whole warm hot. It's big, like it's, it's a big heat mat that goes under there. So yeah, it's... So he can go in there, he'll warm up, and uh, he'll sit in there and he'll let his food get, you know, digest, and, and he just sit down for a while in the heat so it digests and all that. Cold hide, there's nothing under it, just cold just there for just other stuff and other places they can go. So yeah. Okay. This... Right here is the heat mat regulator, and it regulates the temperature of the heat mat. So I have it set, if I hold the set button down right there, hold it down, I have it set to 90 degrees. It's at 89.6. That right there says heating, and there's a little LED thing, a red LED that shows up when it's heating. It's not heating right now because it's basically at 90, so it's not going to do that right now. 
But what I do is I basically get the temperature or set the temperature to whatever my leopard gecko prefers. So basically, if he stays out of his, if he's staying out of his warm hide and not going in it, that means that this is way too hot for him and it's hurting him. And if he stays in too much, that means that it's too cold and I need to warm it up. So he'll actually, so, so it'll be right for him. And in some cases, some leopard geckos won't, they, they won't come out of their, their warm hide if it's too hot, if their heat mat's too hot. And they'll just sit there and burn. Some, some, it burns them sometimes. It burns leopard geckos. Same with snakes. It's basically all the same when it comes to heat mat temperatures. Which the temperatures will vary per reptile, but leopard geckos especially. That's I keep it I keep it at about ninety degrees right now because that's what he it he likes that's what it's uh it's best for what's best for him so yeah and so yeah what I was saying was leopard geckos some of them will get burnt so you just need to make sure you know you're keeping it at not too high not too low so yeah I'm keeping mine at ninety so I mean that could give you a good suggestion right there. So, yeah, these are the two switches to my lights. Right now, I have just the normal light on that heats up. Right here. Okay, wait, that is very bright. Give me a second. Let me turn it off. So, basically, here is my normal bulb right there and my night bulb thing. And I use that at night. It, keep, it provides just a little bit of light. It is safe. Uh, some like red lights some of red lights are not safe for reptiles but any reptiles eyes but this one is safe it's uh moon, it's called a moonlight and uh yeah so it just it provides just a little bit of light at night and warms up the tank at night too this one is just a normal light it heats up can get up to about this one is this one stays about through 80, 90 degrees, so I do not need a regulator for the lamps, but in some cases you will need a regulator um, for lamps. This is, by the way, this is a BN Link, just a heat mat regulator, BN Link. Uh, this one works perfect. I've never had any problems with it, and that right there. That plug right there is just the heat map plug, and I just plugged it right up to this, and I set it to what I wanted, and uh, works great. Okay, so leopard geckos are nocturnal. They're going to be sleeping during the day. So when you're feeding them, holding them, whatever you're doing, keep it during the evening. You know, I stay... Uh, I don't even mess with them till about f five. Uh, yeah, so till about five o'clock in the evening. That's when I start kind of messing with them. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, I did. I just uh, rinsed out her water bowl, put some Refty Safe in it, just squirted a couple of drops in there. I sprayed her Moistide, or his Moistide. And so, yeah. And in a second, I'm going to go get the driftwood, and I'll explain explain the steps I did to sanitize it or whatever. You can't just go outside and get a piece of wood, driftwood or whatever. I use driftwood. Driftwood's a lot nicer. You, you do not want to just go out and get a piece of driftwood and put it in here because there could be bacteria on it and stuff like that. So I'll explain exactly what I did with the driftwood to sanitize it. So yeah. So right now I'm gonna try to pick him up. Really, when you feed him, you need to let them sit. But I'm just gonna pick him up real fast and put him back down just so I can show the way I pick him up. And I just use the scoop method, and it's a lot easier when they get bigger. When he was really small, it was harder to do this. But this is basically what I do. There we go. I scoop him up, and there we go. And there he is. So I'm just going to put him right back down. That's basically what I do. And that really just scared him because I'm usually really quiet when I pick him up. So that kind of spooked him out. But basically, just scoop him on their underbellies, pick him up, 
and they'll usually be just fine. He did just get a little spook right there, though. So. And just keep in mind, your leopard gecko is not just going to instantly trust you and let him pick you up, or let let you pick him up and be just fine about it, because you do have to build trust with leopard geckos. So you're going to have to build trust and be patient. And if he gets spooked every now and then, or she, or whatever the gender of your leopard gecko is, if he gets spooked, don't let that discourage you because eventually. They'll trust you, just take time with it and be patient, and don't force anything. So yeah, basically, you just want to be patient, you know, and don't get, once again, just don't get discouraged, because it took me a while to build even just a little bit of trust with my leopard gecko, and I'm still working on building trust with them. So yeah. Okay, one more thing before we get into the driftwood stuff. I got a lot of comments on my first Leopard Gecko video about not having a heat mat regulator. And I did actually have one, but I just forgot to uh, forgot to talk about it and forgot to show it. So yeah, don't worry. He's doing great. He's getting a lot bigger. So let's get into the driftwood. So here is my, the piece of driftwood. And basically, there's about three options you can do to sanitize it. You can put it in bleach and water and leave it in there for like a couple of hours. Or soap and water, leave them there for a couple of hours. You could do both of those or you could put it in the oven. And that would dry out everything from the inside out completely and get rid of all the bacteria on it. I did all three. I soaked it in bleach and water, soap and water, scrubbed it. You need to scrub it in the soap and water. Make sure you get all the the noticeable dirt and stuff off. And then the oven. So I did all three just to be extra safe. So, yeah. So I think I'm going to put it right in this corner. Wait, no, turn like this. There we go right in this corner like that there we go like that because right here you see it's touching the glass and that's what's holding it stable down there and up there it's holding very well so if I just cover up the ends it should be perfectly fine because it is being supported with the glass right here so yeah that's where I'm going to put it so there's more activities for him to do during the night because they are nocturnal. So, yeah, it'll be great. Oh, and by the way, the ends of the driftwood are not sharp, so it's not scratching the glass. So if you do the same, if you do the same way like this, where it's touching the glass, just if it's sharp and you don't want to scratch the glass, just keep that in mind. But mine is not sharp at all, so it's not gonna mess it up. So. This is him. He's actually kind of big. He's a lot bigger now. See, he just crawls around my hand. And he's getting more chill the older he gets, but every now and then he'll get a little spooked and he won't cooperate. But today he's doing okay. So, yeah. So, basically, that's about everything. And the, and the update for him. See, so yeah, here's the new tank. The driftwood. Got some new driftwood. So, yeah. That's about it. Thanks for watching.